Hey everybody, my name is Maxim Yeremiev, and I'll be presenting our work with Konstantin Voronsov, named Quantile-Based Approach to Estimating Cognitive Text Complexity. I will start with motivations. Uh, well, firstly, the complexity estimation techniques were introduced in the form of readability indices. Almost all of them are functions of simple text statistics such as mean number of words uh, or letters in the text, mean number of letters in a syllable, mean number of words in a sentence, and so on. Therefore, they incorporate a lot of language-dependent constants, so they have to be adapted to every particular language, and overall, they are pretty simple. Here are, here are two examples of uh, the most widespread readability indices. The, AR, the ARI, the Automated Readability Index, and the Flash Readability Test. Uh, we can note that the latter uses a constant with precision as large as three digits up to the decimal point, which is a huge precision, a very large one. Um, so they're not flexible at all, and they're pretty simple. Okay, so second motivation is uh, that we're trying, we're making an attempt to improve the reading order algorithm. Um, the, reading order, the reading order algorithm allows us to rank information search results, not by relevance, but in some logical order, which is a very useful thing for exploratory search. One of the approaches featured in 2015 describes a greedy algorithm based on two statistical features. The generality of a document calculated as an entropy uh, of the embedding from the topic model or the topic vector or and overlap the measure of semantic proximity of two documents for example it can be a cosine distance between topic embeddings combining these characteristics authors build reading sequences like sim simple simple lists sorted by uh, sorted in some in some order and then unite them to get a reading tree here is the example of such a tree for the neural networks topic. Um, the point is that the algorithm allows us to automatic, or like it automatically identifies the topical hierarchy and source documents uh, in logical order. However, our experiments show that knowing how general document is is not enough to generate such a complex structure. So, as for our approach, it derives from psychophysiology. In 2007, Birkin, pub Birkin published a book uh, called uh, Code of Speech, um, which describes the nervous system uh, load behavior when reading a text. Um, in the approach proposed in such a book uh, is based on a few conjectures, uh, like in short, uh, any text can be considered as a sequence of tokens. Tokens is a separate language entity, for example, letter, syllable, word, whatever. Uh, when reading the text, our nervous system uh, decodes the tokens progressively on several language levels, um, on morphological, lexical, syntactic, and so on. Uh, decoding process occur, uh, occur in different uh, neural nervous system zones each responsible for the specific token on a specific language level. As the zone needs time to recover after the decoding process is finished, the frequent occurrence of the same token puts additional pressure on the nervous system in whole. Finally, nervous system adapts to the frequency of the tokens we meet when reading, so evolutionarily, the recovery period for zones accountable for frequent tokens is less. Okay, so building on that, our proposal is based on the following assumptions. First, complexity can be estimated at different language levels, uh, morphological, lexical, syntactic, disc discursive. Every level, each level, is defined by its token alpha, uh, alphabet. Um, on lexical level, uh, the tokens are words, on morphological are engrams, and so on. We'll discuss it a bit later. Um, Text complexity is a percentage of abnormally complex tokens in the given text. Um, the token, the complexity score of a token is abnormal. Uh, if it exceeds 95% quantile in the empirical distribution of its complexities uh, in the reference collection. 
A reference collection is a set of moderately complex texts. Varying the reference collection, we can adapt the complexity models to the specific category of readers or the specific language, for example. Okay, so we formalize the assumptions by introducing text complexity as a weighted sum of individual token complexity scores. Uh, we include in the sum only tokens with abnormal complexity. Well, once again, that exceeds the quantile, the 95% quantile, or we can set uh, an arbitrary gamma quantile of the reference collection. So moderately complex tokens make no impact on the final score. As for weights, they can be any positive non-decreasing functions uh, of the complexity score. For example, if we set weights equal one, a constant one, uh, we can get uh, the number of abnormal uh, complex tokens in the given text. Okay, so how to calculate the complexity of a single token? We introduced two ways to do that. Well, firstly, there is a distance-based method, uh, the main one, that derives from the initial assumptions. Here, the complexity score is a decreasing function, uh, function of the distance uh, to the previous occurrence, occurrence of the token. Uh, such functions should be decreasing because only the most frequent terms put pressure on the nervous system. So the empirical distributions are built for each individual token in the alphabet. In the counter-based approach, we, we assume every term has fixed complexity score, like not depending on the position on, uh, on, on the position in the text. So alphabet of the level includes the only token. In other words, the token's complexity is defined only by its linguistic properties. For example, length of the word or sentence. Um, therefore, the only complexity distribution exists. Like we, when, when going around the, the reference collection, we build the only distribution. We introduce multiple models for all language levels. Uh, we start with the phonetic level, where tokens are letters. This model was initially described in the work of Birkin. Um, it uses a simple distance-based model and counts R, R, I, the described distances to the, previous, uh, to the previous occurrence. For the first occurrence of the letter in the document, the previous occurrence does not exist, uh, so we redefine the distances so that uh, the sum of all distances for, for a specific token equals the length of the, uh, the, length, of the, the length of the text. Sorry. Um, like it is like we, we, will, we duplicate the text and put the counterpart in front of the given document. Pretty the same thing. Okay, so the next elaboration is morphological level with tokens as morphem, syllables, or in general case, engrams character and grams. And grams can be sorted or unsorted. Um, in the former case, we sort the letters alphabetically in each engram. By doing that, we reduce the vocabulary size so the empirical distributions we obtain are more precise. In our experiments, we use, not, uh, we use uh, syllables instead of engrams, omitting to choose this N parameter. Uh, so here is the example for Russian language. As we can see, standard tongue twisters use repetitive syllables to put pressure on nervous system. So we have to go over them multiple times to get their meaning. Um, highlighted in red are abnormally complex tokens, which correspond to the complexity score in the red zone of their distribution. The red zone in the distribution corresponds to the complexity scores uh, exceeding, uh, that, that, that exceeds uh, that exceed the 95% quantile of, the, of their empirical distribution. All other syllables' complexities are, are less than this quantile. Okay, so the uh, next up uh, on lexical level, tokens can be separate words, but it's useful to apply lemmatization or stamming. Uh, we need such transformation because the word's vocabulary turns out to be bust. Uh, and that makes our distributions less precise. Um, well, the words as a language entity is large enough to introduce a counter-based model. 
it can be its length or its rarity in the reference collection. Well, indeed, uh, rare specific tokens require more professional preparation to handle them rapidly. Here's the another example of a distance-based model trained on Russia Wikipedia. Uh, two frequent words such as uravnenie and two specific words such as ellipticzki are highlighted. So they are complex, they are abnormally complex. Um, most scientific texts actually are lexically complex in terms of our model, of course. Okay, so moving forward, um, the syntactic level features two models. We use UDPipe to acquire part of speech tags and dependency trees for the sentences. Um, the distance-based model can be built on syntax token, on syntgam uh, as tokens, because uh, the, the alphabet of sentences is, is huge and, we, and, the distribution we can, and the distributions we can acquire are, are, are completely not precise. So we introduced the syngams, which are pairs of part of speech tag and type of sentence part. For instance, uh, it can be a syngam, a noun and subject. Um, their vocabulary is not that large, and so a distance-based distance -based model uh, is applicable. On the other hand, uh, a lot of counter-based models can be examined because the sentence is, uh, has multiple linguistic, linguistic features and properties um, to research. With complexity as maximum or mean uh, length of the syntactic dependency in them or just their total number of syntactic dependencies. Okay, so here is the example of the counter-based model with complexity as number as uh, maximum length of the syntactic dependency uh, in the sentence. So the syntactic model, the, the, the counter-based one, so we have the only distribution uh, for all sentences, uh, for all sentences we, 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 can, uh, we can meet in the text. Okay, so last but not least level is discursive. Uh, here, tokens are sentences as well, but on this level, we estimate clearness and coherence of the text, uh, whether it is tough to comprehend. Only counter-based models are examined. Uh, as for complexity scores, it can be length of the sentence or number of special connector words uh, in it. Uh, for example, like e ili katori shtobe for Russian. There are about 150 of them for Russian language. Uh, the graph on the slide corresponds to the to the like this connectors words model. Again, the counter based model, so there is the only one the only distribution. Okay, to unite all models from all levels, the aggregated model is introduced as a linear combination of models uh, results from various levels. So um, here we 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 have to fit the regression parameters. Having, uh, having a data set of document pairs labeled like uh, which document of the pair is more complex than the other one, uh, the fitting task is pretty similar to the learning to rank problem. Therefore, we can use the sum of pairwise margins uh, with a non-increasing margin function uh, as uh, to be our loss. Such loss penalizes the penalizes closed values of two complexity scores. To avoid overfitting, we use elastic net method uh, of combining L1, L1 and L2 regularization uh, strategies. So how to acquire such data, such data set to fit the aggregated model? Using a crowdsourcing platform, Yandex Taloka, we have gathered 10,000 labeled pairs of documents from Russian, Russian Wikipedia. Given a pair of documents, assessors were asked to read both pages carefully and choose which is more challenging to comprehend or to indicate that they are equal. We chose documents from math, physics, medicine, and programming areas. The topic modeling approach, namely the IRTM, the edit, additive additive regularization of topic models, sorry, um, was used to cluster the documents by fields. However, if there still occurred a pair of documents from different areas, assessors have the opportunity to indicate that. 
Each pair was labeled by two assessors to avoid human factor mistakes. Um, so actually we can use this data set not to fit the aggregated model, but also to validate our unsupervised ones. So we use the accuracy score as our, as our target metric. So our target metric. So like uh, it is the percentage of pairs where um, models results and model results and the assessor results align. Okay, so the experiments results are indicated in the table. We use Russian Wikipedia as a reference collection for all models and compared uh, previously proposed models with our novel ones. We use readability in we we use we use readability indices as baselines. So for all models, we use 95% quantile, so like the gamma equal, uh, we, we said the gamma equal to 95%, and weights uh, we said equal to complexity score divided by the document length. So we obtained some kind of a mean complexity score for each document. The results show that all quantile models we examined outperformed readability indices and lexical models performed the best. The syntactic model results are nearly the same Bringing the, right, uh, bringing the idea that counter-based models can be approximated with distance-based models if suitable tokens found. The sorted syllables model performs better than unsorted, which proves the assumption about the sustainability of distribution uh, in sorted syllables model. Okay, so as for aggregated models, we tested several of them depending on margin functions. To test them, we preliminarily divided the labeled data set on train, in train and test parts, leaving 2,000 labeled pairs for testing, for validation, actually. All aggregations demonstrate increasing in target metric, in target metric supporting the assumption that the load on the nervous system appears on all language levels. So our aggregated, our aggregated estimation that combines uh, results from all levels um, have, uh, shows better quality. As it can be seen, negative uh, squared error works best for fitting an ensemble. To demonstrate the proposed theory um, application and actually how it works in, 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 on real text, we developed a web resource, textcomplexity.net. Um, it highlights abnormally complex tokens for an arbitrary text and can be used in editorial purposes. For example, if you want to make your text as easy as possible on all, on all language levels. It currently supports models fitted on Russian Wikipedia for all levels except, except discursive. So like for morphological, uh, phonetic, lexical and syntactic. Uh, you, can, you can try it right away by, by visiting the link. Also, we have published an open source library called Cognitive Complexity, which was used in conducting the experiments. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, we proposed uh, a few models, a few models to estimate cognitive complexity. Um, and they all outperform the standard, the standard baseline, baselines, while ensembles show even better quality. By varying the reference collection, we can obtain complexity scores concerning a particular domain. We introduced the way to measure the quality of the cognitive complexity models based on crowdsourcing. We also published an interactive web resource to try the models in real time, and the open source library for everyone to try it on different re reference collections and for different languages. I think that's it. I think I'm done. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing you at the conference on June 19th. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed um, our research. Thank you. Thank you so much.